praise God, saints. I want to thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. My name is Elder Joseph Cotton, Jr. I'm from Acts 4 Gospel Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. I just want to thank you once again for tuning in to Friday Night Holy Ghost Service. Amen. I hope you had a blessed week. I have had a blessed week. I had a blessed day. Every time God wake me up, I know it's nothing but his mercy and his grace. Hallelujah. So I just want to give him all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And, and right now, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the viewers that are watching tonight. Lord, you know what they have need of before they even ask. I set myself in agreement with their prayer according to your will, to your word. I set myself in agreement as touching that very thing that they're asking for. Lord, I pray that you speak to them through me in the name of Jesus. As I decrease, I ask that you increase in me and use me as a vessel to be a blessing to your people. And I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you to get your Bible so we can get into the Word of God. Amen. It's, it's, it's something that it's just really been disturbing me a lot. We have so much violence and so much crime and so much hatred in the world. Just people are upset and angry. And, and it just stuck in my spirit that the world need love. We need real love. We need some godly love because right now people young people are dying on the streets they are self-destruction they killing each other they just doing things that just don't make no sense we have no peace in our community we got people suffering and just things is just going buck wild in this world and people just need god People just need to let the Holy Spirit lead them and guide them and direct their path. And and and, and when you talk to God, don't you know when, when, when God answers you, he can speak through you to, to actually use you as a vessel to go out and tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we forget that Jesus took our place when he died on the cross. And he asked us to take his place and continue to do the work that he was doing. And the only way we can do that work is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We have to be filled with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit will cause you to love people that normally you wouldn't give a time of day. They'll make you forgive. The Holy Ghost will make you forgive when you really don't want to forgive them. Matter of fact, you want to cut somebody out, but the love of God make you bless them despite of what they've done. The Holy Ghost is our helper. He's our comforter. He's the one that gives us strength in the time of need. When we weak, then the Holy Ghost say, say, then I'm strong. When you weak, then I'm strong. So, so when you give your life and you give your body to the Lord Jesus Christ, all the areas you weak in, he will make you strong in those areas. But you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And how do you know if you are filled with the Holy Ghost? My question is, are you operating in the love of God? Are you loving your family members? Are you loving your co-workers? Are you being the blessing in your neighborhood? Or are you being the blessing to people in general? Or, or you just don't have no time for them? Because you you just worried about me, myself, and I, and, and, and maybe just your kids. But I'm saying the world need love. And I talked about this before. And, and, and I, I ministered on the, the fruits of the Spirit. And, and the fruits of the Spirit, it starts off with love. Because you got to have love in your life. You got to be loving others. And then guess what happened to you? People start loving you back because you reap what you sow. It's called the law of reciprocity. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And I'm here tonight to say we need to start sowing love in our community, sowing love in our family, sowing love to the people that surround us because this world needs love and they're looking for God. And the only God they're going to see is the God operating in you. So get your Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I've been here before, so if you, but 
Turn, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But I want to read from verse 1. And give me a minute. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. And then I'm going to read it in the NIV Version. Amen. So this is a little bit of word, but I, I'd rather read the word to you than to preach to you any day. Amen. So then you can't twist what I said, but it's the word of God. Amen. So he, he says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, and this is in the King James Version, he said, I am become as a sounding brass, or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seek of not her own. It's not easily provoked. Think of no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Bear of all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Now, I'm going to break that down in the NIV version because I, I like it. It's in plain English. And you will see how they replaced the word in the NIV version. They replaced the word charity with love. King James say charity. NIV translated it. Because that's what the translation actually means. Charity is translated love. Now watch how this reads. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the NIV version. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have faith that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs like people do. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. The Bible is talking about love. We have to be operating in the agape love of God. When you say you love somebody, that is an action word. If you love somebody, you should show them that you care. You should be there for them. You should be patient with them. You should be understanding with them. That's why he says, so I speak in tongues of, 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 of angels, 
but but do not have love. You can have, be operating in your gift. But if you don't have love, it cancels out everything else. When you're ministering to somebody and you're trying to encourage them, but you don't operate and give it to them in love, then it, 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 it has no power. When you speak to people, I minister from my heart because I really do care and I really do love. And God made me this way so that I can help people. But you can't say that you love people and you're trying to help them and you're doing all of this stuff, but you're not doing it in love, but you're complaining the whole time. That's not the love of God. When he went to the cross and died on that cross, he didn't complain. Matter of fact, he asked God to forgive him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was the love of God that Jesus was displaying while they was whooping him with a cat of nine tails, hugging him on the cross, blood running from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. That's the real love. If somebody slap us in our cheek right now, boy, we, the whole house going to know it's a fight because we really don't have that Holy Ghost love in us. We got a lot of talk, but we don't, we don't walk the walk. We got a lot of talk, but a lot of people don't walk the walk. They go to church. They put on church clothes. They look nice and holy, but they not holy. They only look holy. I'd rather be holy than to look holy any day. Amen. Some people say, well, you still dress like you in the streets or something like that. I don't care. Jesus was so common. Judas had to kiss him because he didn't have one of no alligator shoes and big diamond uh, ring on and, and had this fancy chain on. Now, he was so he was so blended in with the people. They didn't even know who he was. Judas had to say, man, the one that I kiss is him. We don't have to look like we know no elder, no no pastor, or, or nothing. Just love the people of God. Show them the way. Teach them what God taught you. Be that godly example every day of your life because people are dying out there on the streets. People are hurting and they need love. People committing suicide because they think nobody love them. How can we ever walk by somebody and see that they're hurting and don't try to help. Don't you know whatever you give, God is going to give it back to you? When you're doing a good deed for the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to bless you with your heart desire. That's why I say, trust in the Lord and do good, and so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and do good, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. But he say, say, he say, am I only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal? Making all that noise, but ain't saying nothing. You know, you know, you know some people in church and other places, they loud, but they ain't really saying nothing. If you really listen to what they say, they ain't saying nothing, but they just loud. He say, if I have, in verse two, if I have, the gift of prophecy and can't fan of all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. I don't care how great your faith is. You got faith to believe God to do a lot of stuff for you. But do you have enough faith to go out there and put your neck on the line for somebody else that's in need, somebody going through some from trial and tribulation, somebody that's suffering and going there. Do you have time in your busy schedule to call somebody, pick up the phone and check on them and see how they doing? Do you got enough time to look at your brother and your sister and tell them that you love them and really mean it? Do you have time? The world has got us so busy, we don't have time for nobody. So we're saying even though you got faith to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. We're nothing without love. It's what I'm trying to tell you. We need to have love as our number one priority. Matter of fact, if you got love, it'll fix your marriage. If you have love, your kids will come back home and start visiting you more. 
You done ran them off because you so mean, you thinking you helping them, but you forgot to let them know that you love them. That's all you do is cuss them out, talk about them, and all my bad kids and that. Love your kids. Support your kids. And then when you then then when they they're in trouble, they don't mind coming to you to talk to you. But they gotta first off know that you love them. And support them with their dreams. Help them with their career. Do something to let them know I got your back. So love is the key. Love is number one priority being a Christian. You got to be willing to love people because you never know what somebody can be going through. Because a lot of people suffer in silence. Let me say that again. A lot of people suffer in silence. They don't know who to go to for help. They need help. They about to explode and kill everybody. But somebody not telling them that they love them and support them. See somebody stressed out. Ask them, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Look like you got something on your mind. You need to talk? You need to talk? You need to sit down? Or you don't got time now? You, you want to go out to lunch or something? You, you, did you got time? We can talk. If you need somebody to talk to, call me. Give them your number. Give them your information. Just time out. A lot of people walk around with built-up frustration because nobody will listen to them. And then one incident happened and they blow up. And people want to know why, what made them do that? What made them go crazy like that? They just snap. No, that, that stuff, they didn't just snap. That stuff been building up hatred. Don't you know people are still traumatized at 40 and 50 because of some damage that happened to them when they was 5 and 10 years old? Don't you know some, some, some grown people right now is still suffering and their personality is affected because of what happened to them when they was a child? Somebody molested me. Somebody, somebody, um, grabbed me in my, my, my area and, and, and I didn't want them to do that because it was a man trying to touch a boy and, and, and somebody else did this and, and well, well, they used to slap me and beat me because they was on drugs and, and all of a sudden, all people want is to be accepted in love by somebody. I got a lot of brothers now that's around me that I'm trying to help out. All they need is somebody with the love of God to give them a moment of their time. Just to check on them. Not bringing up what they did in the past, but checking on them to see how they're doing today. And then we can, we can help them later on. When they know that we care about them, then we can start dealing with some things in the past. But first, they need to know that you care for them and that you're not just criticizing them and persecuting them for what they have done. Jesus don't do none of us like that. When we ask God for forgiveness, he cleanses us from all our sins. Why? Because he loves us. And in verse 3, he says, and I'm reading the NIV version with this. He says in, in, in verse 3, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. He said you could be feeding the homeless. You could be putting yourself in situations that's causing a hardship. He said, but if you don't have love, all of that is for nothing. Because love comes with the ministry that God gave you. Love is the key, my brothers and my sisters. Love is the key that'll fix your problems. If you can find love for somebody that just to encourage you to be with you, you'll feel a whole lot better about your problems. Because people looking for help but don't know where to go. But here you are, a child of God, loving the people, telling, hey, my brother, you looking good today. Hey, 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 my sister. Oh, you looking nice. I love that dress you got on. You looking like you look like you anointed today. Just, just something nice to say. Encourage them. Put a smile on somebody's face. Watch this. And in verse 4, it says, love is what? Patient. Love is patient. Or in the King James Version, it says, charity suffereth long. But the breakdown is, love is patient. 
Charity suffereth alone. That means you got to have patience with some people. Can't be rushing. They can't get it like you get it. It didn't, it didn't happen for you overnight. So be patient with some people. They learning. Just keep teaching them. Keep speaking to them. Keep encouraging them. I found out that encouragement helps a person more than you telling them about their negative things. You know, you need to change your life. You should be tired of going to jail. You should be tired of getting kicked out the house. You need to marry somebody. You need to do this. You, we, we tell always negative. Every time, we, every time we see them, you got something negative to say. Why don't you try some encouragement? People that's doing bad already know they're doing bad. Tell them how they can stop doing bad. Encourage them. Build them up. If they're looking for a job, help them look for the job. Oh, yeah, I got a little point. I got a little point. Oh, I heard Amazon hiring over there. Oh, I heard I heard they hiring down at the port. Help them out. If you love them, help them out. Love is patient. Or King James Bird Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envy if not. You can't be jealous. Because of what somebody else have. Celebrate them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing my brother. Thank you for blessing my sister. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. They deserve that blessing. I know sooner or later, I'm going to give me one too. I know sooner or later, my blessing. Matter of fact, somebody write me a check right now. I'm being blessed right now. You got to speak them things into an existence. You got to call them things that be not as though they are. You got to celebrate your brother when they starting to win. You got to celebrate your sister when they starting to do good. Encourage them. Root for them. Be their biggest cheerleader. And then guess what? Somebody bigger and better than you going to come back and they going to bless you. Because you reaping what you sow. So love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. We got some people that just got too much pride. They can be, they, like I said earlier, they can be suffering in silence, but they still walking around like everything is all good. Everything is roses. They talk like they the biggest and baddest and the most blessed person ever. And they broke from the toe up. I mean, they, they, they broke from the flow up. And they tow up. So I meant tow up. But from the flow up and tow up. But they'll figure like they got it. They act like they act like they blessed. Cause they just got pride. They don't want nobody to know that they going through something. But pride go up before destruction. And a hearty spirit before fall. And in verse 5 it says. In the King James Version it says. Does not behave itself unseemly, seek of not her own, it is not easily provoked, and think of no evil. And in verse 5 in, in the NIV, uh, NIV version, it says, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. You ain't doing stuff to be seen. Look at me. Look at what I'm doing. You you pray for somebody, anoint them with oil, and all of a sudden they pass out. You 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 blow your you like like you got a gun, like you got a Holy Ghost gun on your hand. <sighs> Lay hand in the name of Jesus. Lay hands, and they fall out, and you <sighs> blowing on like like you did something. You ain't do nothing. If it wasn't for for the Lord Jesus Christ using your body to go up there and lay hands, you you don't have no power. You need some Holy Ghost power to be able to do that. You give glory all to God. You give all the glory to God. Because it's not you doing it. It's him. Remember, he's living his life in your body. And he paid the price with his body. Exchanging places. He became sin who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God. And then he says, he says, I'm going to read the NIV version one more time. It does not dishonor, verse 5. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. We got some people who to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but you get angry at the snap. Somebody, somebody look at you wrong. I know they ain't looking at me all funny like that. You supposed to have the Holy Ghost. 
You're supposed to be operating in love. But somebody can't look at you and you think they, they face twisted up. Don't you know the devil hates you? And he know what buttons to push? And he want to make you look like a fool when he push your button? And how you lose your wig? Because he done push your button and then all of a sudden you want to apologize. Well, he already made you look like a dummy. Now, now you can ask him for forgiveness and pick your wig up and put it back on your head. But you still going to look like a fool for a minute. So that means you need some temperance. The Bible says temperance. The fruits of the spirit. One of them is temperance. Means you got some self-control. I'm a roaring lion. But I can control myself. I see my prey over there. But I'm not going to roar at them and scare them away. I'm going to watch them. We can learn from animals some things. Here we are. We are a king. A king has self-control. He got some patience. He know how to be quiet when it's time to be quiet. Because he see his prey over there. And he don't want he want to use wisdom when he go run at them. And he ain't roaring and running them off. Because he know he ain't gonna eat that night if he roar. So one of the loudest animals in the jungle is quiet. And some of us need to learn and be like the lion and study to be quiet because you talk too much. Some of us just talk too much. Don't you know people don't know how big of a fool you are if you just be quiet? I was in this, I was in this little quick story. On, on behalf of Bishop Bob Jackson, I went to a meeting at Children Hospital. And I'm in this meeting. Don't know why I'm there, but I put my clergy collar on. I'm trying to look professional. You know how I do. I put my little clergy on my little tab collar. Went in the room, nothing but doctors over all type of organizations. This one is over. I'm doctor such and such, and, and I'm over a, a $500 million budget. And, 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 and then another doctor, oh, I'm doctor this and that, and, and I'm running a program, and we got $300 million in research. And, and another doctor said, and I'm looking and saying, man, what, what bishop got me into? What, 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 what am I doing here? I'm the one that got kicked out of high school. Uh, what, what am I doing? I'm not over no multi-million dollar organization. What am I doing here? But the Holy Ghost told me, shut up, don't say nothing. Because they don't know how dumb you are if you don't open your mouth. So the whole time while they're going around the table, a doctor that I had, Dr. Vijinsky, at Children's Hospital, because I was born with sickle cell, and he was my doctor from a child up. He's the main speaker over the whole meeting. He's the guy that they all coming to see and to talk to because he's this big time doctor and researcher. And they all happy to be in his presence. And when he seen me, he said, Joseph Cotton? And I said, yes, sir. And he seen me with my little clergy collar on. He said, man, I remember, I don't know, I, I thought you might have died years ago. You you wasn't going, oh, guess what he started doing? The whole meeting while he going over the research and all of this stuff with, with sickle cell and with cancer patients and, and the kids getting sick and all this stuff. He would use me as an example the whole time. Before I got, before they got to me at the table with their great names and all that money, he stepped in and God had somebody speak for me. And he talked about me the whole meeting. I'm telling you, if you trust God, God will speak for you. And when I humbled myself as a little child, God raised me up. By the time the meeting was over, all the 300 million, the 500 million doctors, the, the, the 250 million dollar doctor, they always coming. Oh, shake you, shaking my hand, shaking my hand. Happy to meet me because Dr. Vinjinsky was talking about me. And we trying to lift ourselves up. We trying to talk too much. Run DMC had a song back in the day. You talk too much. Homeboy, you never shut up. I say you talk too much. Homeboy, you never shut up. Sometimes we need to just 
be quiet. If you're going to say the wrong thing, just be quiet. If you're going to act the fool or somebody say something to you, just remove yourself and study to be quiet. And let God fight your battle. And then in verse 5, he says, and, 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 what could I was talking about anger? And being quiet sometimes instead of giving somebody the peace of your mind. He said, it keeps no record of wrongs. In verse 6, it says in the King James Version, it says, Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. The NIV Version says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. You can't be trying to do good, but also evil at the same time. You're either going to be good or you're going to be bad. But you can't be good and bad. We got some people want to be saved, but they still want to roll with the devil. You want you want to party hardy, but you want to praise the Lord on Sunday. You want we got some people saying 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 I I, I love him and I'ma stay with him and I'm I'm gonna have sex with him and do all this stuff, but I still want to go to heaven. No, you you you're gonna bust hell wide open, you and your boyfriend. You and your boyfriend gonna bust hell wide open. You 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 doing you doing the boom boom, and you know you ain't married, and you at the church all in ministry, all praising the Lord, giving God the glory, and you know you in sin. I would not want to die in sin because you gambling with your soul, you rolling dice. Hoping that Jesus' grace will cover your sin. And you sinning willfully. You need to come out of your sin. You deserve better than that. You ain't no rent a car. You don't let nobody ride you. You give him all of the benefits of a wife. And then when he tired of you, he just drop you back off to the parking lot and get another one. You better than a rent a car. Want to rent you for a season. Can I rent you for a couple months? You know I love you. I'm, I'm thinking about buying you. I'm, I'm going to buy you a ring. I'm going I'm to I'm do this. You know I love you, girl. After a couple months, once he got what he want, now he treat, now the real him come out, he treats you like a piece of trash. And you still trying to hang on to him because you love him. That ain't no love. That means you just got played. I'm trying to help somebody. He says, you can't be operating and delighting yourself in evil. Sin is evil. It separates you from the love of God. And it rejoices over the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hope. Always preserve. Love never fails. Never fails. My brothers and sisters, we need more love. We need more love. Just straight up. I hope this message helped you today. I want you to get your mind right, get your heart right as I pray for you. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You can be saved from your sin right now. You can be delivered. And God will forgive you. And he will not remember your wrongs. He won't bring it back up in your face. He already paid the price for it. But don't use Jesus dying on the cross as to get out of jail card, like a sin free pass, or I get I got a pass to go out and sin, and then I can come back and he'll forgive me. Don't do him like that. He loved us too much for us to ever treat him like that. For 15 years by myself, I was tempted over and over and over again. 
Oh, she nice over there. Oh, she, she nice over there. Oh, she say she'll take care of. Oh, she's money, everything. Anything you can think of, they was throwing it. But 15 years, I kept saying, I can't do that to the Lord. He paid too much of a price for me to ever turn my back on him. He saved my life when he didn't have to. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, we have to serve the Lord and treat him better than what we've been doing because he did too much for us to turn our back on him for temporary satisfaction. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. You shall be rescued, delivered. So if you can repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sin. I do believe that you died on the cross and was buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the doors to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my personal Savior. Now I'm giving some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, I want to ask that you support our church. If you would like to give a donation, go to askforgospel.org and look for the donation button. You also can go on the Cash App and give on the Cash App. Look for Ask for Gospel Oakland. Ask for Gospel Oakland. You also can give on Givelify. Amen. Or you can mail it in the old school way to 1034 66 Avenue, Oakland, California, 94621. Remember, we love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. If you like this broadcast, if you like this broadcast, please hit the like button and share. Amen. Like and share. On Facebook, like it. And then share it to your page. Amen. Because our family and our friends need to be saved. If you're on YouTube, you can like it and share it as well. God bless you all.